there and welcome to another Partners in Crime tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll learn some of the basics of how to make these types of 3D text in Blender, as well as learn how to use an online Blender resource called BlendSwap and link in a pin materials. For this tutorial, we'll be making this specific text with the Blender Cycles Render Engine. Now let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to clean up our scene for our text. So, I'm going to press X on my keyboard and click delete to delete the default cube. Next, I'm going to go into front view by pressing numpad 1 on my keyboard. Now, I'm going to press control alt numpad 0 on my keyboard to bring the camera into front view. Alright, so now I'm going to go into the top left of the screen here and I'm going to add some text. So click add and click text. Rotate the text 90 degrees on the X axis by pressing R and then X and then 90 on your keyboard and press enter to confirm the rotation. Alright, now I'm going to press tab on my keyboard to go into text edit mode and I'm going to type my own custom text. So I'm going to erase this text and I'm going to type my preferred text. Alright, now press tab to exit text edit mode. Alright, so now I'm going to go into the right of the screen here, go into the text object data tab, I'm going to scroll down and under paragraph and align click center. Alright, so that we have our text in the middle of the screen here. Now I'm just going to left click on this blue arrow here, and I'm going to drag my cursor down, and that's just going to move the text down on the Z axis. Alright. Now I'm going to go back into the right of the screen here, and under font, I'm going to click this folder here, and I'm going to open a font that I have stored on my computer. Alright, so for this tutorial, I'm just going to use control freak alright and now I'm gonna press S on my keyboard I'm just gonna move my cursor out I'm gonna size this text up alright I'm gonna move it down on the Z axis again okay so now I'm gonna go back into the right of the screen here scroll up and I'm gonna add a bevel to our text so under bevel put the depth value to about 0 0.013 alright and I'm going to bump up the resolution on that bevel to 20. Alright. So now I'm going to change the offset to negative 0 0.016. And now we have a nice text object here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my middle mouse button to pan around the screen here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Shift D on my keyboard to duplicate this text object. Right click to cancel the movement and go back into the right of the screen under geometry and modification reset the offset value and put the extrude value up to 0.1 alright so now we have a nice extruded text object what I'm going to do now is I'm going to left click on this green arrow and I'm just going to move my cursor back here and this is going to move the text back on the Y axis alright like so now I'm going to press numpad 0 to go back into camera view, see how this text looks. Alright, so our text is looking pretty good. So before I forget this very important step later, I'm going to go into the top middle of the screen here, and I'm going to change the render engine from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the bottom left of the screen here, and I'm going to click User Preferences. What I'm doing now is I'm going to get my background for my text object, okay, for my whole scene. And I'm going to, basically this background is going to be an image mapped onto a plane. So what I'm looking for is an add-on called Import Images as Planes. So I'm just going to click the Import Export section here. And you can see here, Import Export, Import Images as Planes. So I'm just going to check that. And I'm going to go back into 3D view. All right. So, the image I'm going to use for our background is just a simple image that I created in GIMP. Alright, I'll include the download link for it in the description. So go to the top left of the screen here, click File, go down to Import, and you'll see Images as Planes. Click that, and I'm going to select GText 3 for Blender, okay, and I'm going to click Import Images image as planes. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is go to the bottom of the screen, the viewport shading section, I'm going to change it to 
textured viewport shading. All right, so click that. And I'm going to use my middle mouse button to pan around here. And you can see that we've got our image mapped onto our plane here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate this plane 90 degrees on the x-axis, just like I did our text. And I'm going to pull it back on the y-axis, all right? Like so. I'm going to pull it way behind our text because it's going to be a background. All right, now I'm going to press numpad 0 to go back into camera view, see how this looks. And I'm going to go in the right of the screen here, go into the object data tab for this plane here. And I'm going to pay attention to the scaling section and press S on my keyboard and move my cursor out. I want to scale this plane up to about 28. All right, and I'm going to pull it back on the Y axis again, like so. All right, that's good. So what I'm going to do now is right click on my camera. And I'm going to go into the camera object data tab. I'm going to change the focal length of our camera to 53 so that it just zooms on our text here like so. All right. So now we've got our text and our background and some a pretty good portion of our scene set up. But our text is looking pretty plain. So we're going to get some materials for our text. And we're going to get these materials from a site called BlendSwap. So I'm going to open up my browser. All right. This is BlendSwap. Okay. Um, it's a very good site for Blender resources like node setups and materials and things. All right. Um, you have to get an account if you want to download, you know, anything. Uh, I think they only require that you have a, a username and an email if you want to get an account. So I'm just going to open up Notepad. And I've got these blend swap material links here. I'm going to post these in the description. All right, there are links to the materials I'm going to be using. Just going to paste them in my browser. So the first material pack we're going to be using is called Car Paint Node Material for Cycles. It's created by the Full Nine Yards. The license is CC0. Okay, so I'm just going to click Download here. All right. Make sure you agree with the license and click Yes, Download Now. All right. Now I'm going to go back in the notepad and I'm just going to copy and paste the second link I've got here in my browser. All right. The second materials pack we're going to be using is called Metal Materials Pack for Cycles. It was created by this guy. The license is CC0. And I'm just going to click download here. All right. All right, make sure you agree with the license and click yes, download now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is click this arrow here. And I'm going to click show in folder. All right, now these files are in my downloads folder. I'm going to right click on the car paint materials pack first. And I'm going to use my third party software to extract it because the blimp file and presumably a license also are packed in this zip file. So I'm just going to right click on it and I've got 7-zip in WinRAR installed. I'm just going to use 7-zip and I'm going to click extract here. Alright, so this is our car paint materials pack. And this is the license that came with it. And I'm just going to right click on our metal materials pack and I'm going to do the same thing. Extract it. Uh, just click no to all. Alright, so we've got our metal materials pack and we've got our car paint materials pack. So now that I have those downloaded, I'm just going to go back into Blender. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the top left of the screen here. I'm going to click File, and I'm going to go down to Append. Select that, and I'm just going to go to my Downloads folder. Make sure you direct Blender to the folder where your Blend files are. All right. And I'm just going to click the Car Paint Materials Pack first. Click Material. And I'm going to select red. All right. So now I'm going to right click on our first text object here, the one that we didn't extrude. And I'm just going to go to the right of the screen here and click the materials tab. I'm going to click this icon right here and select red. 
So now we have our first text object and it is red. So I'm going to go back into the top left of the screen here, click File, and click a pin, and I'm just going to pin my second material. Alright, so I'll be using Silver Rough. Okay, so double click on that and right click on your extruded text. Now go back into the right of the screen here, click this material icon, and select Silver Rough. Now our extruded text is silver, and we've got a nice red material for our front text. So I'm just going to go back into viewport shading here. I'm going to change it to rendered so I can get a general idea of what this will look like once it's rendered. And as you can see here, we need to work with the lighting. So I'm going to go back into textured viewport shading. And I'm just going to use my middle mouse button to pan around. And I'm going to start with these lamps here. So first I'm going to right click on this lamp here. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. I'm just going to move it in front of our text here. So we get some nice light in front of our text. Alright. I'm going to right click on this lamp again here. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. Move this lamp just above the Z here. Alright. I'm going to change the size on this lamp to 0.5. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate it. I'm going to move this lamp back by our plane. So we get some nice lighting on our background. All right, and I'm gonna push. I'm gonna right-click on this lamp here, move it up on the y-axis. I'm gonna change it to a sun lamp. All right, I'm gonna rotate this lamp on the z-axis by pressing R and then Z on my keyboard. I'm gonna rotate it towards my text. All right, press numpad zero, go into camera view, and I'm gonna just go back into rendered viewporting just to see how this looks. Alright, so I'm going to go back into solid uh, textured viewport shading here. Alright, so we've got some pretty nice lighting going on with our text here. So what I'm going to do now is going to press numpad 0, go back into camera view. I'm going to refine our text a bit. So right click on our red text object, go into the right of the screen here, and click this wrench here. This is the modifier section. Click add modifier and we're going to add an edge split modifier. So select that and we've got a nice split on our text there. So I'm going to do the same thing with our extruded text. Alright, so now what I want to do is I want to get a nice individual letter rotation effect on our text here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two text objects for each letter I've got here. One's going to be the red material, and one's going to be the silver rough material. So what I'm going to do is press tab to go into text edit mode, and I'm going to erase all the letters except for one. Press tab to exit text edit mode, and repeat that with our silver text material. Alright, now I'm going to hold down shift and right click to make sure both of these text objects are selected. I'm just going to move it to the right of the screen here maybe a bit lower on the z-axis. Alright, and I'm just going to press Shift D to duplicate that. Make sure you've got both text objects selected so that they both duplicate. I'm just going to press Tab to go into text edit mode again, erase the text, and keep typing each letter as I go along. Alright, so now we've got all of our letters here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to select all of these text objects at once. So I'm going to go to the bottom left of the screen here. Click Select. Go up to Select All by Type. And click Font. Alright, I'm just going to move these up on the Z-axis. Alright, so now I'm going to individually rotate each text object. 
well each letter all right so right click on both text objects for the letter and I'm just going to start rotating so I'm just going to rotate on the z-axis to on the x-axis slightly and rotate it on the y-axis maybe a little bit more z rotation all right like so right click on our a's and I'm going to rotate our A's on the Z axis, so press R and then Z. If you get a rotation you don't like, you can just right click to cancel. Alright. Now I'm going to rotate our Z's on the Z axis, and I'm going to rotate them on the Y axis, just slightly on the X axis. Alright. And now I'm going to right click on our E's and I'm going to rotate them on the Z axis, on the X axis, and on the Y axis. Alright, I'm just going to press G and move the, the Z's up a bit. Alright, so now we've got our text objects and they're rotated. And we've got our scene pretty much set up. So I'm going to prepare our scene for rendering. So going to the right of the screen here, click this digital camera icon here. I'm going to scroll down and click sampling. I'm going to change the clamp value to 0.98. I'm going to change the number of render samples to 100. Alright. So, this is looking pretty good. We've got our settings here. So I'm going to press F12 on my keyboard to render now. Alright. Okay, so cycles can sometimes take a while to render, so I'm just going to pause this tutorial while it renders. Okay, so we've pretty much got our 3D text here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refine our scene a bit. So I'm going to jump into the compositor and check use nodes and check backdrop. I'm going to move these nodes around a bit. Now I'm going to click add output viewer. Alright, so now I'm going to add a glare node just so we can make our scene a bit brighter. So we'll click glare, hook it up after our render layers node, change the glare type from streaks to fog glow, and change the quality from medium to high. Pull the threshold down to zero and hook up our glare node to our viewer node. Alright. So I'm just going to go back into default view and I'm going to change this image to viewer node so we can see how our scene looks to our viewer node. Alright, so this is a rendered scene without the compositing and this is our scene with the compositing. So this is going to be our 3D text. So if you want to get a more high quality image, I recommend putting the resolution up to 100% and changing the number of render samples to something high like say 300 or so but for this tutorial this is sufficient so save your file alright and we're pretty much done making our 3D text so thanks for watching and subscribe for more tutorials from partners in coordinated rendering of ideas motion and effects